Hello Cyber Sentinels, welcome to another episode of CyberSec Blogs, and I am your friendly neighborhood cybersecurity advisor. In late 2022, a cyber attack on Ukraine's electrical power plants gained a lot of media attention worldwide as it affected millions of people. Interesting fact was that the cyber attack was launched on the plant's OT infrastructure, which was attributed to a nation state threat actor known as Sandworm. Mainland, which is a well-known cybersecurity firm and now part of Google, was called in to perform an investigation of the incident. And in November of 2023, they published a detailed forensic analysis report of the incident. Now, the cyber attack wasn't just a digital heist. It was a full-scale assault that left parts of Ukraine in the dark, literally. Let's dig a bit deeper. How did Sandworm actually pull this off? Till date, the initial access vector is still unknown, but the investigation from Mandiant revealed that the adversaries gained access to the operational technology environment through compromising a hypervisor hosting a critical SCADA instance. The SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System and is widely used in numerous critical infrastructure sectors. In this specific case, it was the Micro SCADA system. The adversaries loaded an ISO image to execute Micro SCADA binary, which then potentially used an API call to send malicious commands to RTUs, which are remote terminal units, to switch off substations. The attack resulted in an unplanned power outage. To give you some context, According to Dragos, a cybersecurity firm specializing in ICS security, MicroSCADA has been deployed in more than 10,000 substations and monitors the electric supply of more than 10% of the world's population. The adversaries did not stop here, by the way. After two, way, after two days of the attack on the OT environment, they launched a disruptive Viper malware on their IT environments. I would highly encourage you to read the detailed recommendations in Mandian's report, but here I want to focus on two key aspects from this whole incident. Number one, investigation revealed that the OT environment was using an end-of-life version of Micro SCADA. The specific SCADA control implementation language API which was targeted in this instance is disabled by default in newer versions. This highlights the importance of implementing proper risk-based patch and vulnerability management program in OT environments. Number two, investigation revealed that the adversaries most likely resided in the OT environment at least two months before the actual attack. This is very much prevalent in modus operandi of advanced persistent threat actors these days who strategically position themselves within the environment way before making the decisive blow. This highlights the importance of robust threat monitoring use cases for OT environments, monitoring of unauthorized program and command executions from SCADA systems, monitoring of telemetry network traffic to detect anomalous network traffic to and fro the uh, SCADA systems, monitoring of unauthorized changes in system configurations, for instance, what we need is an assume breach mindset where we just don't focus on the perimeter controls, but to start to look for anomalous behavior within our OT network. So let me ask you this question. Are you an asset owner or an operator maintainer of a critical infrastructure organization? Do you think that a cyber attack on your OT infrastructure is far off or not possible? Is improving your OT cyber posture not on your business's investment priority? Better think again. Stay safe. Stay secure and see you in the next vlog. Peace.